Earlier today in Abuja, the Defence Headquarters held a press conference to celebrate the bravery, commitment and sacrifices of our armed forces. The event also aimed to promote national unity through music, culture and philanthropy. Well, let's take a look at the proceedings from earlier. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, we are here to welcome you to the 2024-2025 edition of Tribute to Our Troops 3.0 with the team A Nation's Gratitude. Hashtag thank you soldier. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, as we prepare for another impactful edition of Tribute to Our Troops, I want to express my profound gratitude for all your unwavering partnership and support over the years. This foundation has grown into a national platform to honor, of honor rather, unity and remembrance because of the vital role you play in amplifying the voices of our heroes present, our falling heroes, and in bridging the gap between the military and the civilian communities. Your coverage, stories, and dedication to sharing the sacrifices of our armed forces have helped us foster a deeper understanding and appreciation for their contributions to our peace and security and the protection of the territorial integrity of our dear motherland. You are not just storytellers. You are vital partners in strengthening the civil military relationship of the armed forces and the core objective of tribute to our troops. This year, the TTOT Foundation is set to inspire and engage Nigerians through new and exciting futures. We have, uh, we, we have introduced the Wall of Fame where we'll be celebrating our fallen heroes. We give Nigerians that opportunity to show love, respect, and honor to those who truly deserve to be honored and recognized in our dear country. We all know recently our beloved Chief of Army Staff, former Chief of Army Staff, the late Lieutenant General Tariq Labaja, a national hero whom those of us attribute to our troops had dubbed, had dubbed um, our angel in Kamu. My fellow Nigerians, these great men and women have sacrificed their all to have us to where we are today. For us, our tribute to our troops, we believe it is more honorable for us to give our armed forces the love respect and honor due to each sacrifice they make. As such, that wall of remembrance is to remember the likes of our brother, Lieutenant Co uh, Commodore Gideon Guaza of the Nigerian Navy, who also passed saving 59 civilians in Boni Camp River State. It amazes me how these wonderful sacrifices are not really made a core uh, made, uh, made hypes about as it deserves or as it should be. So we are tribute to our troops, uh, set up this wall of fame, mainly for these purposes where families, the entire community and Nigerians are encouraged to come out to support our armed forces and show them the respect they deserve. We have also introduced what we call the TTOT show an exclusive conversation where civilians and the military communities would engage and discuss on better ways on how to enhance uh, the civil-military relationship. We, we need your voices, now more than ever, to highlight these initiatives and encourage Nigerians to embrace patriotism. Through your various platforms, you can inspire unity, pride, and a renewed commitment to celebrating those who stand as guardians of our freedom and protectors of our territorial integrity. I also want to take this moment to extend 
my heartfelt gratitude to General Christopher Musa, the Chief of Defense Staff, for his unwavering endorsement and support for this project. And I sincere thanks to the service chiefs, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Olufemi Oluyede, Vice Admiral Emmanuel Ogola, who is also a Mabel Chief of Naval Staff, and of course the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Hassan Abubakar. It is with your steadfast support and belief in the vision of tribute to our troops that inspires us all to keep building bridges of unity and respect. As we gather to honor our heroes, let us remember that our strength as a nation lies in our unity and shared purpose. My dear members of the press, I urge you to remember steadfast partners in this mission through your words, images, and stories. You have the power to connect the heart of this nation to the valor of its defenders. Together, we can ensure tribute to our troops not only honors our heroes, but strengthens the bond that holds us all together as a people. With gratitude and pride, Princess Olivia Adom, founder Tribute to our Troops Foundation, thank you very much for your time and your audience. God bless you all. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, um, I'm Air Vice Marshal Anthony Epe. I'm standing in on behalf of the Chief of Defense Staff. And uh, I will just quickly make some statements about what his mindset and what he feels about this event that we are going to start in a few days' time. And uh, it is with great pleasure that um, the Defense Headquarters is collaborating with the Tribute to Our Truth Foundation to present the third edition of this event tagged A Nation's Gratitude. I must say that this initiative is a testament to the commitment of the armed forces of Nigeria in fostering unity, showcasing resilience, and celebrating the valor of our servicemen and women who dedicate their lives to safeguarding our nation. Tribute to our Troop 3.0 edition is not just an event. It is a movement that combines the power of music, culture, philanthropy to honor the selfless sacrifices and bravery of the armed men and women of the armed forces of Nigeria. While it offers a unique platform to connect the military with the civilian population, emphasizing the importance of mutual understanding and collaboration for the progress of our great nation. As we carry out this event, the co collaboratory part of it ensures that both the military men serving, retired, and even our civilian counterparts within our areas of jurisdiction are all invited to participate in this event. This year's edition is proudly endorsed by the Chief of Defense Staff himself, General C.G. Musa OFR, and is supported by the Nigerian Army Headquarters, Naval Headquarters, and the Nigerian Air Force. And this reflects the enduring spirit of teamwork within our armed forces. It also highlights the cultural richness and unity that defines us as Nigerians, serving as a beacon of hope and patriotism. We are confident that this third edition of Tribute to Our Truth will inspire a deeper sense of national pride and solidarity among Nigerians. We urge you, gentlemen of the press, our esteemed partners in nation building, to amplify this message of appreciation of our troops and their roles in ensuring peace and stability of our nation.
I want to say on behalf of the Chief of Defense Staff, I extend our heartfelt gratitude to men and women of the armed forces who are out there on a daily basis having sleepless nights so that we can sleep peacefully in our homes. I also want to express the Chief of Defense Staff gratitude to our fallen colleagues, their families who have sacrificed so much to ensure that this nation remains as one. Our gratitude goes to tribute to our true foundation led by Princess Olivia Ava Adam for their tireless efforts in championing this noble cause. Together, we will continue to honor the legacy of our service and sacrifices that defines the armed forces of Nigeria. I want to especially thank you all for your support, and we look forward to seeing you at Tribute to Our Troop Event 3.0 as we celebrate our heroes and strengthen the bond of unity in our nation. God bless the armed forces of Nigeria. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And God bless us all. Thank you. Is there any way to the Minister of Defense? What are the processes here? And you may say online because each day you will be embarrassed. You keep on asking you and asking you what's going on. No, you are not going to answer. Okay, um, thank you very much for your question. If I get your question correctly, you want to know whether there is any uh, package for widows that are in the barracks. Well, Pierre, okay, but you mentioned Ministry of Defense. I cannot talk on behalf of Ministry of Defense, but I can talk on behalf of the Armed Forces of Nigeria. To the best of my knowledge, we have various schemes. The military, as you know, is a well-organized institution. Though, unfortunately, we lost some of our colleagues to operational reasons, but there are a lot of packages, you know, that are organized to ensure that the families they left behind don't suffer. We have scheme for their children to go to school, and uh, despite the fact that they were paid what their husbands, are supposed, what they are supposed to be paid on the death of their, you know, breadwinners, those ones are paid to them. And additionally, from time to time, welfare packages are given to them. For example, now Christmas is coming, any moment from now, we are already in the season. The services ensure that they reach out to those widows that were left behind by our fallen colleagues, our fallen heroes. And like I said earlier on, there are scholarship schemes meant for their children. All the three services pay scholarships to the children of the service, uh, I mean, personnel that paid the school price. Thank you. I hope I have answered your question. Okay, okay. let me just uh, okay, add something. Yeah, in addition to that, you know, the thing like he has pointed out, there are entitlements due to their husband that are paid to the widows. And the children, they are, their school fees are paid up to university level. You know, it's a process, this is there. I know most of them that are facilitated to sign their forms, and they are paid, their school fees are paid up to university level. So it's not as if we just leave them there to cater for them. And we have organizations like, in defense, we have the POA, Defense and Police Officers Wife Association, we have mm -hmm. NAFOWA, we have NOWA, we have NAOWA. So these organizations are headed by the service chief's wives. These are, in fact, the POA in Abuja here has training institutions, skill acquisition centers, where they train these widows and orphans in the barracks. So they are not people we just live like that. It's there, in fact, 
my department is organizing an outreach program in, organ in a collaboration with the POA to reach out to these widows. And even some of the, uh, you know, the incomes that might be generated from this program, we are also having. It is going to be used to cater for the need of the widows. So um, the thing is that when you hear such complaint and you are bringing it to us, please, we have departments and the, the admin is there that caters for this. And if they feel that, okay, the offices are too tall for them to, this our officers' wives association, they can walk into either Nafowa, Nowa, the POA office and go there and lend their complaints. These are headed by women like them. And then there is no way these our wives will ignore them. But there are schemes for them. That's all? No, I think I hear you. Oh, okay. On the, on the. In addition to what has been mentioned, as it covers the education and the access to health care, recently the Chief of the uh, started uh, you know, issuing out the uh, houses, for building cute houses uh, to following Euro families. So uh, that is a new addition to the welfare that is existing. So in, uh, in the Navy in particular, we have uh, uh, another directory of veteran affairs that handles the process of their welfare of the foreign period. So that is just in addition to the a whole lot of the welfare package that are there for the public. Thank you. Can, can you have a question? Any other? Any other, any other questions, please? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Quite some of them, you know, uh, suffer deaths, you know, not uh, So, how do you get to keep them motivated to keep on defending the country and carrying out their responsibilities? Okay, um, I, I will start by telling you that. Um, when troops are deployed for operation, especially the one we are engaged in all over the country, there are special allowances that are paid to them. So it's not as if, uh, apart from their normal salaries, there are special allowances that are paid to them. And then coupled with that, uh, you can see that uh, most times the chief of defense staff, the service chiefs, they are all out there in the field, reaching out to the troops. Uh, from what we can see, the chief of defense staff himself had been in the theater before, now, before he assumed his present appointment. So it's, uh, he has first-hand knowledge of what is going out there. And most times he's out there in the, with the troops, motivating them, speaking to them, giving them new directives, new ideas on how to go about their operations. And then we also have some special, like the program we are having now, tribute to our troops. We motivate them with this because we go out there during festive occasions like this or periods like this, we reach out to them. We show them gratitude. We make them understand that, look, you are fighting for the nation. And then we also recognize the fact that you are fighting for the nation. 
And then uh, one thing you also need to understand is that every soldier, every rating, every airman whom you see wearing this uniform volunteered to come and serve the nation. It's not as if, uh, it's not a conscriptory service that you go and force people into. They volunteered. So sometimes when you see them, they are doing this in order to keep. In fact, that self-motivation is already in them before they came into the service. So with this and a lot of other welfare packages, that the thing is that, um, like we have pointed out, in the cost of serving the nation, if you fall by the way, the service does not leave your family totally unattended to. So with these uh, incentives here and there, we motivate the troops into continue fighting. And that is why you will see that, unlike in some nations where you will see mass exodus of troops, our troops are still one of the best in the sub-region. When we go to operations in Liberia, Sierra Leone, and all that, once Nigerian troops appear, you will see that uh, whoever the rebel is, they will take over. Thank you. Okay. okay. So, um, in addition to what Vivian Epper said, one of the leadership concepts of the Chief of Defense Staff, General C. G. Musa, is prioritizing troops' welfare. Uh, particularly those that are in the operational area. We have special promotion for them. Where they do very well, they are given special promotion. And also, they are entitled to additional incentives while in the field. This is what, you know, distinguish those in the field and those that are not in the field. There are additional allowances, operational allowances that are given to them. As you, as ABM ever said, the CDS spent 19 months as theater commander in the field. So when it comes to troop welfare, motivation, and other things, he's very, very much interested. He's always talking about troops in the field. What do we do to ensure we make them comfortable? We raise their morale. All these things are under uh, special concentration for troops in the field. And they are being done to charge their, you know, to, 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 in, to arouse their morale, you know, so that they will put in their best in the service of their fatherland. Thank you. So I would like to add a little to what um, Brigadier General So has said. Recently, as a civilian, I was privileged to visit the members of uh, the armed forces. Um, first, it was in 2022, and recently at uh, 44 Reference Hospital. We had the privilege of talking to some of our wounded soldiers, visiting them, asking them about, uh, I mean, without uh, being uh, supervised. Uh, if, if you like, by the members of the armed forces. We went in there, asked questions, uh, to get first-hand information directly from the wounded soldiers. And they told us first-hand that they never had this better. Um, the blind, some of our blind soldiers have been, that recently were affected uh, by the operational injuries they incurred in the Northeast, are presently receiving uh, therapeutic um, uh, uh, receiving therapy rather at uh, at Joss, uh, I think school for the blind in Joss, and they said for the first time they are no longer depressed. I mean, some of those clips will be played during the course of uh, the events for Nigerians to see. Now the military has done its part. What we are concerned about mostly is how we as citizens tend to treat our armed forces. We know first time that we also underappreciate these great men and women who have also given their all for us. I mean, it's one thing for, for each and every one of us in this room. We can easily get up and say today, whatever jobs we are doing, we are no longer interested, we can leave. But these people have given up their freedom, uh, voluntarily, yes. 
but it should be, uh, we should all recognize the fact that they've given up their freedom, the comfort of their homes, their wives, their children are always at the receiving end. And at the end of the day, the people they have sworn to protect tend not to treat them the way they truly deserve. So in as much as the military is doing theirs, we at Tribute to Our Troops are also here to encourage Nigerians to please consider giving it another thought. Consider the fact that no matter the lapses, the, no matter the little mistakes here and there, that you, I mean, every sector, every, every career path has its own little hitches here and there. But we should also try as much as possible to give honor to whom honor is due, to show love and support to these people. They have sacrificed so much, and it would be really nice if we can consider showing them more love and considering their families as well. So we should start by, first of all, talking to ourselves as citizens. The way we treat our armed forces is the way we are perceived anywhere in the world. So for whatever reason, you'll never see an American or any other uh, Western uh, country talking down their troops. They have their own issues. But you don't, you don't talk down those who have chosen and sworn to protect the territorial integrity of your country. While they are in the cold, I took ill just one night in the north, just one night. And these are people who stay in that harsh weather, protecting this country, and at the end of the day, they come out, they find us bashing them. The wounded 25-year-old uh, uh, Abdurazad, a young man who is incapacitated on wheelchair, had a simple message for Nigerians. He said to me, my pain is not even that I'm on the wheelchair. My pain is the way we are treated after the sacrifices we make. We feel we are not even recognized. You need to hear their parents speak their hearts out. They keep singing praises or in those living presently in the armed forces. But again, their, most, uh, their deepest pain and concern is the way we treat them as citizens. And that is what Tribute to Our Troops is trying to help us, encourage us as citizens to please Give it a second thought on how we treat our armed forces. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is, is there any other, any other question? Tom. Any other question, please? To take one more. Hmm? Okay, I think. Is there any other question? Okay. okay. Thank you. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. We look forward to seeing you at the concerts. Okay, the venue, the, okay. the opening event is going to be at Ikeja Cantonment Lagos, which is uh, two days from now, 13th. Um, the venue is always the barracks, it's uh, the military space, but it's open to civilians. It's a good place where we come to interact, understand each other, and I mean, take it from there. It's fun, and it's something we are going to be going across 16 states. We are going to give uh, the list of the various from 13th of December to from 13th of December to 2024 to 15th of January, which is going to be the melting pot here in Abuja, 2025, on Armed Forces Remembrance Day. We'll be giving every Nigerian the opportunity to come out and show the Armed Forces love. Hence the hashtag Thank You Soldier. So hence from anywhere you go and you see any man in uniform, just consider showing them love first. Just say thank you, soldier. And you see how well they will appreciate you. Thank you very much.